A bus is bombed. Once the speed is lower than 80 km per hour, the bomb will explode. Today, I am going to talk about a crime-fighting, action movie is called, Speed. In a mall in Los Angeles, Payne posing as an elevator repairman and kills a security guard. He then blew up the cables of a running elevator. When the elevator falls at a high speed, the emergency lock is activated. Stopping at the 30th floor, we see that there are 13 employees stuck in the elevator. The main characters Jack and Harry also drive to the destination. They are bomb disposal officers on the rapid response team of the Los Angeles Police Department. Payne demanded that the police give him $3 million. If there is no money within one hour, he will detonate the emergency lock. Only 23 minutes left. Jack and Harry are sent to inspect the elevator. They climb down from the roof of the elevator from the 32nd floor. Sure enough, there was a bomb that Payne had planted. Harry is a master bomb diffuser. But the problem is that this bomb is extremely sophisticated. Even he couldn't remove it immediately. So the two decided to rescue the person in the elevator first. Jack go to the roof, thread the steel wire to the roof of the elevator. Payne also noticed something unusual at this time. He immediately detonated the emergency lock. The elevator is now falling down with too much force pushing it. The crane's head was stuck in a very dangerous corridor. Jack and his teammates seize the opportunity, then save everyone out. Later, he and Harry discovered Payne's location in the cargo ladder. But Payne is very wise. He directly shot through the roof. Harry gets shot and then Payne takes him hostage. In a moment of urgency, Jack took a shot at Harry's leg so Payne couldn't drag Harry away anymore. He blew up the garage floor and ran away. Jack and Harry are awarded for successfully rescuing 13 hostages. Panier quickly plotted revenge. He blew up a bus with only the driver right in front of Jack. The driver was swallowed by the fire. Then, Jack gets a phone call from a payphone. Payne told him he still had a bomb on the another bus. As long as the speed of the bus reaches 80 km per hour, the bomb will explode. Turns out, he did it because he wanted to pick a fight with Jack again. Payne told him the bus number. But this time, Jack is not allowed to go outside. If not, Payne will detonate the bomb immediately. He demanded $3.7 million by 11 o'clock. He said that's the retirement money he deserves. At this time, the bus had already picked up a lot of people, preparing to drive to the highway. But there are quite a few cars on the highway, so Jack has to drive very carefully. Jack drove the car to the back, then he ran after while telling the driver to stop. But this is not a bus stop, so the driver doesn't care much about him. Then he stepped on the accelerator. Jack immediately set up the black guy's car to chase. The people on the bus saw Jack repeatedly honking the horn. But the bus driver did not understand what Jack meant, and directly accelerated to 80 km per hour. The bomb at the bottom immediately kicks in. It was ant until the black man wrote it on paper that the driver realized. Wait, there's a bomb? Jack told him to stop slowing down. Then he jumped over the bus. But unfortunately, the unfortunate black man's car crashed into the sandbox. After getting onto the bus, Jack pulled out his badge for everyone to confirm. To make sure people wouldn't panic, he didn't mention that there was a bomb in the bus. Annie Porter, a short-haired girl, said indignantly. You scared the old lady behind you. Unexpectedly, there was a thief on the bus. He pulled out his gun and pointed it at Jack. He thought Jack was coming to arrest him. Then a brave black worker pounced on the thief. As a result, the thief pulled the trigger and shot the driver injured. The bus immediately wobbled. As a former school bus driver, Annie immediately jumped on the bus to drive. She was about to drive to the hospital. But Jack stopped her, saying there is a bomb on the bus. After controlling the thief, he contacted the head department. The press helicopter arrived almost at the same time as the police helicopter. Jack tries to find the bomb at Annie's feet, but he didn't see anything. The driver said that there was a door on the floor of the bus, so he went there to look. Opening the door, Jack discovered that there was indeed a C4 on the chassis. Moreover, it is also an extremely sophisticated bomb. Right now, the traffic ahead is congested. Annie immediately drove off the highway. She accidentally crashed a car and sent it flying. Unable to stop, she repeatedly crashed into the many sand, even going in the opposite direction, passing all the cars blocking the road. The helicopter flying in the air tries to guide her the best route. There is a newly repaired road that is not yet open for vehicles to enter. When going through a sharp turn, Annie used both her hands and feet. She successfully drive the bus into the empty road. Jack ran over in admiration, saying, he has never seen anyone with such top driving skills. The police drove a large truck over, intending to transfer people from the bus. But the press helicopters are watching. So Payne calls to warn Jack to follow the game rules. He threatens Jack, saying, If you takes action to rescue people, I will immediately detonate the bomb. After some negotiation, Payne agreed to transfer the injured driver. But there is one woman who insists on passing. Payne saw this and detonated a small bomb at the car door, sending her off to heaven. This warning tactic is very effective. 
It made Jack so angry that he told his colleagues to tell the press helicopters to fuck off. At this point, everyone in the bus is safe. Before this disaster is over, another disaster um gere. The helicopter at this time discovered a large empty hole ahead, about one meter. With no other choice, Jack had to tell Annie to step on the accelerator. Then he pulled the steering wheel. And so the bus flew over to the other side. In front, is the entrance to LA airport. Jack told Annie to drive to the airport. Run around to buy time. At this time, Payne called, asking for two bags of cash with non-contiguous serial numbers. Jack used the excuse to collect money to get off the bus, trying to negotiate plans with his superiors. Jack lay on a cart close to the ground. The press helicopters are not allowed into the airport. He wanted to try to get under the bus to defuse the bomb. Despite Harry's direction, they were not able to remove it in the end. At this time, the police department finally found Payne's information. It turned out that he was a former police officer of the Atlantia Mines and Arson Squad. He was sent to early retirement after getting his finger exploded while on a mission. Because he was dissatisfied with the retirement money received, he devised a plan to blow up the elevator to blackmail the government. The police quickly went to Payne's house to arrest him. On this side, Jack got hit by a manhole cover. This caused the trolley cable to came loose. Luckily, he reacted in time. He immediately used a screwdriver to stab the fuel tank, tying himself to the bus frame. Then he was pulled up from the floor door by the bus customer. After overcoming this danger, they will have to face the fact that the car is about to run out of gas. The police broke into Payne's house. A remote-controlled bomb instantly exploded. Payne also called to mock Jack, saying, Tell your superiors to prepare the money. Put it in a trash can in the northeast corner of Parkson Square. After hanging up the phone, Jack's mood is extremely pissed. The sacrifice of his partner made him almost collapse. But Annie encouraged him. If you die, the movie will come to an end. Come on, you're John Wick. After he calmed down, Jack made an important discovery. Payne installed a camera to monitor the whole bus activity. Jack came up with a plan. He told everyone to look ahead, and not to move much. After asking his superiors to requisition communication equipment from the press, the police relayed the frequency of the camera to Payne's camera. Then record a video, play it over and over again to fool Payne. Payne is still watching that video, thinking everything is fine. Jack called another bus to bring everyone over. In the bus now, only Jack and Annie are left. The bus couldn't take it anymore and the tire burst. Jack helps Annie stabilize direction. Use an iron pipe to block the accelerator and tie the steering wheel with a rope. Finally, the two use the slide to escape from the floor door. The bus lost control and crashed into a Boeing 707 being towed. Insert explosion scene. Now Payne still don't know that the bus has exploded. Jack suggested a plan. Take advantage of Payne to get money, then immediately arrest him. So $3.7 million was put in the trash can as promised. Payne secretly sees the gunner in the distance. He smirked, thinking he could outsmart John Wick. But he later discovered his surveillance video was pre-recorded. He then disguised as a policeman, approached the scene to arrest Annie. The police waited and saw no one coming to take the money, feeling that something was wrong. Jack ran to the trash can. Turns out, Payne had dig a holes in the bottom of the barrel. Take the money and run away. Fortunately, there is a locator device in the bag of money. Jack chases to the subway station. Discovered that Annie had a bomb on her body. He did not dare to shoot. Payne made Annie go into the train, ordered the train driver to drive away. Then chase all the people inside the to go out. Jack, thanks to the power of love, opened the door of the train with his bare hands. He quickly hid, waiting for the right time to counterattack. When he was about to enter the station, Payne shot and killed the train driver who was about to call the police. Then he handcuffed Annie to the iron post. Jack has now climbed onto the roof of the ship. Payne, who heard a noise on the top of the train, guessed it was him. He wants to use money to bribe Jack. But as soon as he opened it, the dye bag inside burst into his face. These bills have been marked, so he cannot use them anymore. Payne then got mad, he began to shot at the roof. Jack while dodging bullets, dropped his gun. Payne in a fit of rage decides to go on the roof of the train to have a duel with Jack. But then, he was outplayed by Jack, got knocked down by the signal light in the undercarriage. Jack quickly returned to the train, dismantling the bomb on Annie's body. After contacting the headquarter, he found out. The road ahead is not done yet. The emergency stop button is broken. Jack didn't have the key to the handcuffs, but he couldn't bear to leave Annie on the train. There's a 90 degree corner ahead, so Jack comes up with a way. He increased the speed of the train to the highest. The train tracks then began to spark. Immediately, the train skidded off the track at the turn. Then the train hit on the main road. Then it stopped after hitting the rear of a van. The couple in the train were unharmed. In the end, all of Jack's efforts was paid off. He got the girl. The two of them live happily until John Wick won. The movie comes to an end.